here we go good morning everyone and thank you for joining me for uh, another uh, technically a chen style class but we're going to do a little bit of other stuff of healing um qigong type exercises uh, to get us in so we're going to start with our salute let's take right hand in fist and left hand straight pulling back the thumb feet together hands together and press forwards okay so we're going to do a variation of the chinese qigong sequence uh the eight nests opening the eight nests um in english we're going to call it the big six so uh, we rub the hands together i think i have uh, linked um uh, linked to to a fella uh, online before about this but we're going to start with one of my exercises which is to go with fists to the breastbone and just gently mobilize the flesh over the breastbone that's it and all the way down the breastbone um, just careful of any jewellery and then we'll do a little Tarzan and Jane type. You need to open one side and pass across, that might be easier. Cut hands and the other side and across the chest. Okay, so that's my little contribution to the big six. Now we rub again and we're going to go to the left collarbone first so i'm going to my left collarbone you can go to yours just place the hand over the collarbone and start to rotate so you see i'm using my other hand to brace the elbow you could also just bring both hands to the collarbone and you see the way i'm moving my center to give me the fulcrum to press in and change direction please so we're just wanting to mobilize the flesh over the bone you could actually rub the skin that would add a wee bit of heat as well but i want to get the flesh um releasing a little bit so if there's any fascia that's stuck it gets released good and now we're going to give it a jolly good thump so that whole area above and below the collarbone let's go to the other side so we adhere to the collarbone and gently rotate as you can see i'm not just using my arms I'm turning my center a little bit and um, using my Tai Chi theory to help me make the movement stronger. And um, we can circle one way and we can circle the other. Just make sure you're not getting your hair tangled. Good. You can give it a wee rub, see how that feels, play with it. And then again, left hand, give it a good thump. Good. Now, uh, down behind the ears. So this takes a gentler touch. There is a, a muscle here that attaches the head to the sternum and it's called the sternocleidomastoid, the SCM muscle. And you can see it on some people. It's mine used to be quite uh, pronounced. You see that line? That's the SCM, that sort of V shape. So we want to gently stroke down behind the V shape. So all the way from the back of the ear, all the way down gently does it. It doesn't, doesn't need to be firm, just nice and soft and gentle. Uh, you could, if you want, do little circles with the heel of your hand, circling in and down, in and down, in and down. <clears throat> and that helps to drain the sinuses. So this work is all about lymph getting the lymph sh shifted and we're just i shouldn't have stood up should i we're just going to gently pitter pat so you could do a little like that down the back of the neck so we don't need to thump no thumping just very gentle gentle stimulation down from the back of the ear to the sternum good and the other side pitter pat You find yourself doing weird and wonderful things in Tai Chi, but they pay off. <laughs> Good. All right. So we've done that. So now we go on to the armpit. So we lift up one arm. I like to do it this way. I saw the, I keep saying the fella in the video because I can't remember his name. It's doctor. Give me a second. And I shall tell you. 
Dr. Perry Nicholson was the was the gentleman that I referenced for, for this information. But he just sort of goes around the armpit area, which is fine, but from my lymph training, I think lifting the arm over the head just opens up that whole area and gives you more access. So again, I would turn your center to help mobilize. So we don't actually want to be pressing into breast tissue at all, but you can gently sort of nudge the tissue around because we're just wanting a little stretch all the way around, a little mobilizing all the way around the upper arm, the armpit itself, and onto the chest. Good, and give it a good thump. Cupped hands. Keep breathing. You'll notice if your hand is cupped, it's a much nicer experience than if the hand is flat. Good, and change. And again, get in there, into the armpit itself, to the top of the arm, into the chest. That whole area has lots of lymph nodes. We call them the auxiliary nodes. And they're like little grapes. There are lots of little bundles of infection fighting white blood cells and sentinels for your health. Good, so let's give it a cup. Around. So this will really help your system to clear um, if you've been fighting infection, it'll help the fighting process, it'll help to get rid of any gunk that's, that's stuck in your system, it'll help you feel fresher and more able to think. Let's go on to the abdomen now so we can rub our hands together. Good and adhere to the abdomen. And again, I'm using my center to mobilize my hands. So I'm kind of sticking my hands to my body. And then by moving my body, I'm helping to stretch the flesh across the structures a little bit. Good, let's change direction. So yes, this really helps to clear the system, but what we want to do is add it into our daily regime so that we are regularly flushing the system good now often the tai chi way would be to do circles um, and to go along up the right hand up your right hand side across and down to the left so we're going in line with the large intestine and then you can go back the other way or you can do little as i say little circles to guide it around and then back the other way but just adhering to the whole lot is another way so they're all good you can play with it just mobilize the whole area and then we have our drum roll again, want to cover the whole area and you could again go up your right hand side across and down the left hand side this is very qigong this is the traditional way of doing it and then you go the other way notice i'm mirroring for you just giving everything a good drum roll will do. Whew, do you feel like you're working yet? I do. So let's rub and we continue on to the inguinal nodes. So the inguinal nodes are at the crease, the tops of the legs. The Chinese call this area the qua. So we're going to get in there with fists again into the crease of the leg and gently mobilize again by turning the body. That is the most efficient way of doing it. Good, one way and then the other. Good, let's do the other side. Get into the crease and gently stretch the flesh in all directions. Good, see what we're doing? Change direction. Whew, and breathe. You may notice your body really heating with this. So it is a good warm up in itself. You're really using your body. Let's use the blade of the hands now to strike into the crease of the leg. So we can sit the body back a little bit, which makes the crease more prominent and strike, 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 strike. You can do three to nine. You don't actually have to do a lot of these. 
to get the inguinals woken up. You'll feel even after just a few seconds, there's a kind of tingle and buzzing going on in that area. So it just wakes the system up. It's also helping with the circulation. Anything that you hit, the blood will flow. And that's no uh, coincidence. The blood vessels and the lymphatic vessels sit side by side, kind of, yeah, <laughs> kind of like that. And so as the blood is pumping, the lymph gets a kind of free ride and also gets a bit of a pump. It helps the lymph to flow. So anytime when you are exercising, you are also helping the lymph to drain. So exercise in itself is a lymphatic treatment, but sometimes you can overdo it and then the lymph kind of gets stranded <laughs> um, when you're finished exercising. And that's why we get swollen. You know, we get swollen legs after we've done a lot of exercise because the pumping action has stopped from the exercise and yet the lymph is still kind of pulling around. So exercise is very useful. It's very good uh, to keep the lymph flowing. Gentle exercise even more so because it doesn't leave a kind of deficit at the end. So we're going to go to the backs of the knees and we'll give them a jolly good rub. And then give them a jolly good pat. Very good. So that is your big six lymphatic sequence. So it's very similar to, uh, as I say, the eight nests, opening the eight nests. Let's go into a little bit of eight nest stuff as well. A lot of it's identical, but they also add the little elbow nodes. So we can keep the arm curved. Notice we're not going absolutely straight and we can give that a bit of a mobilize, a rub to the elbows. So you can see the elbows are the equivalent to the knees. So the knees, the backs of the knees, the popliteals have more. Uh, let's go to the other side, give it a rub. The, the nodes are a little bit bigger in the knees, but there are still some in the arms as well. So we can and everything else actually is pretty much the same <laughs> in the two in the eight um eight nests and the big six so let's now do a little bit of mobilizing so we could do a heel tap and that's um what doctor is it phillips uh what he suggests but we're going to add a little to that as well I can't help it. I'm pulling from various Qigong um, practices. So what we're going to do, instead of just doing the uh, heel taps, we're going to lift the hands up above our heads. And that has a draining effect for the lymph in itself, for the arms. We're going to keep the wrists floppy. So as we bounce on the heels, we let the hands bounce in the wrists and breathe and let everything be nice and floppy and relaxed. Just a few bounces. That's it. Deep breath. And, and just let the arms swing. And let them run out of momentum naturally. Very good. And there is a lovely little lymph sequence. So we're calling, calling upon various qigongs there we used the eight nests we used the big six we also used a little bit of um information from the uh what's it called green forest qigong um good so have a little break have a drink of water now if you have some it's always good to have water handy um excuse me and just notice how you feel especially if you're doing Tai Chi in a warm space. We're, we're using our sitting rooms. Often we have the heating cranked up quite high. So we want to stay hydrated. In fact, I'm gonna practice what I preach. Cheers. As you can see, I drink by the pint. This is hot water with a little bit of apple cider vinegar and a wee bit of Ceylon cinnamon. It's a nice wee morning drink. 
So the apple cider vinegar is very good for helping to replace um, your, uh, what's it called? You know, it makes isotonic balance. So um, sometimes you'll find when you drink water, you actually feel more dehydrated. And if that's the case, having a little bit of vinegar in your water is very useful, or even just a few drops of orange juice or lemon, <laughs> all very good. It helps to address that balance. Good. So after all of that now, let's do a little bit of Wuji just to calm ourselves and bring our awareness into the functioning of our body. We'll do just a few movements of our uh, seven stars Qigong. I think we'll just do three, the first three movements, and then we'll move on to our Chen style, um, Lao Jia Yilu. So let's begin with shoulder width and level and lengthen up through the top of the head. Bringing the chin slightly down and back. Take your time to breathe. To calm. To let go through your system. Good. Let's find all 10 fingers, gently press them down. Feeling for equal, wakeful energy in all 10 fingers. When you're ready, slowly, gently open your eyes. And open door Relaxing to center. Movement two. Changing direction. When you practice, you may find that you get into the flow and you don't want to change direction, in which case keep going. Keep going until you feel, oh, okay, I've had enough of that. But then make sure you do the same amount on the other side. So we're always looking to address balance in Tai Chi and Qigong. Good. Let's turn the palms and draw in and float up. 
and open. Keep going. Sometimes Tai Chi will be asymmetrical. In fact, sometimes Qigong will be asymmetrical. So there's no hard and fast rule. In fact, it is the nature of the beast that if there is a rule, somewhere along the line, we will break it most of the time. <laughs> Good, let's change direction. Good, all right, movement three, please, we open. So this is perfect combination with the lymphatic work we just did. So this is Master Locke's lymphatic sequence within the seven stars rotations Qigong. Careful that those knees remain in line with the feet. Good, don't let them bow out or collapse in. Let's check posture. Relax to center and repeat. Good. So careful not to bow the upper body forwards. Check posture, relax to center. So it is in effect, it's a squat rather than a forward bend. Um, so you just go down as far as you can comfortably with your legs, but try to keep your body upright. And I'll show you from the side this time, but let's try again. Ready and we open. So we're staying upright as best we can and up and cover center. Well done. Checking posture, breathing, relaxing down into your belly. And just notice how you feel. where you feel it and as you breathe let go good let's release relax the arms down easing from your stance good notice how everything's responding do you feel warm Okay, good. So let us now uh, leave our Qigong to the side. That was really for our warm up. Um, so now we're going to look at uh, the Lao Jia Ilu. And we've been looking recently at parts three and four, so the second half of the form. But I don't want us to forget the first part either. So let's go all the way through the form once. And then what we might do is focus on the end of the form, on the sort of start of the end game section. Um, but also if, uh, if you're using the video and if you've been doing parts three and four, you'll notice the big copy and paste. So part two is the same as part four, except the endings are different. So let's have a go all the way through the form and see what happens. <laughs> all right, so let's come over to the right hand side. As you know, this form takes up a lot of space, so we're going to have to accommodate uh, by taking extra little steps here and there. Um, hopefully you'll see the difference between a real Tai Chi step and my accommodating. Basically, if I'm reaching the, the boundaries of my space, I'll, I'll move. But uh, you can do the same. 
You can leave out steps if you need to, but follow them in your mind. Let's float up, please, through the top of the head, the chin slightly down and back. And let's take a few moments to breathe and calm. Ready, start.
So we turn to face the back for a high pat on the horse. Good, so now our kicking section, we gather to the right, roll back to the left, step the left side across and prepare. Kick, step and prepare and kick. And up, turn to the back. Gather left, hands and fists, turn palms, open. Kick, three steps. San Tong Bay. Planting flowers. And turn. Let's do the stepping version. Step, false kick, real kick, and step back. Palms facing in. Sorry, palms facing out. <laughs> and step. Protect the heart. Good. Ward off, palms facing in the second time, cross, and your circle kick, bounce, push the hands out, turn to face the front, back, good, step to the left, gather your right side, kick to the right, toy soldier position, turn three way punch, and prepare. End of part two. Beginning of part three. So you'll see we have to adapt slightly. Don't want to bounce off the walls. Wafty, wafty. Give yourself space, roll back.
you need more space. One more cloud hands. Up and over. Into the left. So we're into part four. One more step. This is your difference in part four. We roll the arm in, excuse me, and flick. Left arm up, stump, prepare. Normal punch to the corner. War corners, ward off. Thumbs up, single whip. This one finishes the same as the first one. Turn to the back, high pat on horse. Yeah, very good. And the end section, so we circle. Gather to the left, turn, push the left heel out, turn on the right heel, release, and under elbow. Top hand hits the foot, toy soldier, three way punch, stamp, and prepare. And this is your special punch downwards, directly. Uh, diagonally downwards, relax to center, same setup, and now to the diagonal. Good. We gather, upper cup, step, turn, close up. Good. So we make Fists. Gather to the left, roll to the right, relax, under, punch, under, feed the weight back, seesaw, and bring it through. Core, roll, step back, turn to the front. Open chest and turn, pierce up, sit down, kick your back foot through and step down. And for the purposes of this class, we're going to keep our structure and pull the right shoulder back, 
190 degree turn. Up and over, into the left. Back. Throw it out. And. Up, down. Relaxed ankle up, down. Release. Hold up. <sighs> I think of sealing in the good energy at the base of the body. We point to the floor. We release. Fill right. Close left. And a heel tap. Jolly good. <laughs> so it has been a few weeks, hasn't it, since we've done parts one and two. And I don't know about you, but for me, it feels pretty ropey because we haven't been working on it. But that's OK. That's the nature of the beast. Unfortunately, um, you can practice everything and get a veneer <laughs> of depth. Or you can take sections and plow into them and take it deeper. But then anything that we have neglected, you'll feel it. You know, even if you're getting all the steps pretty much right, you'll go, oh, yeah, I didn't feel that so well. So um, in the next few weeks, let's focus on reintegrating and getting parts one and two in there as well. Um, yeah, as as I did it, what quite often happens if you've had new uh, information from a teacher, that's the last thing to go in and it's the easiest thing to fall out of your consciousness and awareness. So as I was doing parts one and two, I was going, oh, yes, I was told to do this. Oh, yes, I was told to do that. And it had gone, you know, I'd already done the movement and had not applied those corrections. So this is perfectly normal. <laughs> Uh, and that's why we want to do a bit of a juggling act. So we want to polish and go deeper in certain areas, but we want to keep then plowing it back into the full form. And that way it's like spinning plates. We don't let any of the plates start to lose momentum. Um, but it's OK if that does happen. It's still in your body and it's easier to revive than to learn from scratch so um even sometimes when you're reviving a movement it makes it new to us and then therefore it helps us to look at it with new eyes and feel into it with new feeling apply the awareness that we have gained from whatever training we have been doing uh, so it's all good you know it's it's one of these things yes we want all our plates to keep spinning but it's OK to let some of them go a little lazy while we're focusing on tuning up others. But we just want to eventually go back to them. Otherwise, entropy will will set in. And eventually, if we leave things too long, we might have to start learning from scratch again. It does happen. There's some forms I've actually let go. I just thought, you know what, I've, I've forgotten this and I wasn't doing it particularly well anyway. And it's not particularly relevant or it's not something that my current master is teaching. So never mind. Um, so, yeah, especially if you've learned a lot of forms, we can afford to allow certain ones to go dormant. That's all right. But if you've put effort in, let's for the most part, let's keep it keep it going so that uh, you continue to get benefits from it. It's historic. If you're not practicing, uh, this is a living art. We want to benefit by doing. So let's do a little bit more. Now, I'd said that we would do the whole form and then focus at the end of the form. So let's do that. So I'd like to look at the high pat on hop horse movement and um, take it from there. So uh, this part starts facing the back. And um, what I might do is pause the video for a second and give you a moment. Um, good stuff. Okay, 
So, yes, yeah, so we're facing the back of the room. And this section isn't really hard, but, uh, but any reorientation can be a bit confusing. So if you just watch me for a second, I'm going to show you exactly what you're doing. I'm not mirroring, but you're standing on the right and you're facing the back of the room. And you're going to roll your center to your left and down, up and over the left and round to the right and relax down. So you'll see the hand, do you remember earlier we were doing this business with the center moving and that moved the hands? This is the same, but the hand is being moved by rolling the center. But if you find that tricky or it's just not happening, don't worry. You can just keep the hand where it is and let the center move and the hand will be moved round in a little circle. Yeah, over your left hand side. The right hand is being it's like a whip. It's being dragged by the center moving. The fingers are last to move and then a little roll. Good. So you see that both hands are in different positions, but they are working as a team moved by the center. Yeah. Good. So that's lots of work in itself just to play with. But it very much harks back to this business, the, what I call the funky chicken silk railing too. So you can play with that. And that's really the, the feeling of it is that the center moves and the arms are moved with. So we drag down, up and over and relax. So the heel of the hand finishes relaxing a little bit down. It's not um, harsh. It's relaxed. So down, up and over, or indeed just leave the hand and let it circle. But both hands are circling, whether you're rolling or you're keeping your left hand steady. Good. Don't let the shoulders get involved. The shoulders want to stay nice and heavy and relaxed. So really, even though movement flows through the shoulders and upper arms, it's the lower arms and wrists and fingers that are expressing it. Good. So after you have done that roll, we turn a little bit to the left to bring the right hand under and cross at the wrists. And then we can turn the right shoulder back, pushing the left heel back, feeding the weight back and continue to turn on the front heel and keep turning Try to get your right foot all the way round to face um, slightly turned out, not just facing the front. Release your left foot and step. And then we continue shifting the weight left, turning left, and finishing by squaring up to bring the right hand underneath the elbow. Good. And rest there, please. So I was asked an interesting question in class the other night. I was asked, what angle are the hands at after you have done? I'm sure that's terrible English, but anyway, uh, I was asked that in better English. So after you've done your rotation, we cross the hands. We start the hands facing in. But as we turn the body, the hands rotate. So they are turning out. So the blades of the hands are pointing out as we're turning the body and as we keep turning the body the palms continue to turn so the elbows are rising slightly as the hands continue to turn to face out so once we have screwed into the front leg your hands are actually facing out like this yeah so from here when we start the move once we've gone down to the left yeah from here palms facing in as your body is turning your hands are turning and they keep turning until you're almost not quite flat but almost with the elbow slightly dropped and then we have our split and come under the elbow so isn't that interesting and it makes total sense if the center is turning the arms should be turning they don't just sit there as you turn your body the body is turning so the arms also 
rotate and they keep rotating. So let's have a play with that section. But instead of facing away from the screen, let's flip the room. So now think that you're facing the back of your room and I'll do the same. So I'll have my back to you and we'll turn towards what was the back of your room. See what I mean? We flip the room around. So if you face screen, please, standing on the right, we're going to draw down to the left, up and over, relax to center. We turn to the left a little bit, bring the right hand underneath so it's on the outside. Turn, push the heel out, feed the weight back, we're turning the body so the arms are turning. We keep turning screw into the front foot so we finish as we square up to the front. We have the palms fully facing out. Well done. And then we can step left, right hand up, left hand down and circle, turning to the left, turn to the arms and left hand pointing up, right hand pointing down. We square up and that brings the right hand under the left elbow palm facing down. Good, so let's do that again, please. Regardless of which way you face, at some stage you'll be facing away from me. So I'm giving you the opportunity for that to be the other part. <laughs> okay, ready? So we're gonna start facing me, please. Facing the screen. So this is the back of your room. This archway is the back of your room. Ready? Ah. Turn to the left, gather, push the heel out, feed the weight back, turning the arms as you turn your body, palms face out, step left, right hand up, left hand down, circle, left hand up, right hand down, and square up, right hand under elbow. Good. Well done, it is worth the effort. Let's try it one more time. Watch me, please. Just watch me do it one time. And then we will flip the room back to normal so that you can follow. So ready? We have our circle. We cross at the wrists. As we turn the body, we turn the hands. Keep turning. So we finish with palms facing out. And step. And circle and under elbow good okay should we do it together and we will do it flipping the room back so we're facing away from me to begin and as we turn then you can follow me so this is the normal way <laughs> if there is such a thing okay so we're standing on the right that's it yes very good relax to center and we do our little circle we're turning to the left, crossing at the wrists, push the heel out, feed the weight back, turning the hands as you turn your body, release the back foot and step, circling the arms as you're shifting your weight, turning left, square up, right hand under elbow. Good. Now this next section, the right foot is coming across and opening. Just try that for me. If that's too much, you can keep it low, that's fine. But it's coming across and opening. And at the same time, your top hand is just coming down and whacking the leg. So we come across, we whack, and we bring the foot down. Now that momentum will help you to pivot. So all we do, as the foot comes down, your left toes, let me see, your left toes lift off the floor, and go down again and that will turn you pretty much a quarter turn and then you just need a little bit more of a turn in your center to get the three-way punch so let's try it you relax to center so the leg comes across you're turning into the left hit foot down lift the left toes and drop them and then three-way punch yeah, do you see what's happening? Let me show you from the front. Now, I'm not going to mirror. I wish I could so easily mirror, but I'll just show you um, as we do. So we've just turned and we've come hand under elbow. So we're turning the center. Remember, all movement in Tai Chi comes from center. 
So if you want to bring your leg across, don't bring your leg across, move your center just a little bit and that will pull your leg across. So it's not leg muscles, it's center doing the work. So we're here, we turn center, we pat, bring it down, a little move and a little move. Watch again. It happens fast. I'm trying to slow it down and control it, but let's see. So we turn center, pat, bring it down, lift the toes and drop. There's your toy soldier position and turn center again for the final movement. So this is not an arm movement from here to here. It looks like it, doesn't it? But it's your center doing a little twist just a little rotation. So from here, we just want to go like that and it gives it power. So it will lift the knee or screw into the leg and it'll bring the arms. And it'll also, if you haven't got all the way round, you can adjust your toe as well. So isn't there a lot going on there? Yeah, let's do it one more time and then we'll warm down because you've done a lot today. So let's go from here, hand under elbow. We come across and pat, bring the foot down, lift the left toes and drop them and turn center and three-way punch. Good. So the three-way punch, you've got the knee lift, which is considered a punch. You've got the hand coming past it which is a punch, and you have the hand going up, which is a punch. So three-way punch, three attacks in one. You've done very well. I hope that little section going into more detail has been of use, is helping you to clarify what you're doing. You can watch it back and uh, play with it. That's the whole idea with these um, videos. I know myself, my sections one and two, we're not great because <laughs> um, we're all students, you know, no matter how much you practice or don't practice. Um, teaching doesn't give you any magical um, abilities other than just giving us a bit more chance to go over the, the material. So, um, but we got through. So uh, you'll know yourself as you progress. Um, when it's flowing like silk and when it's just a bit rough, but that's all part of the process, folks, and it does get easier. The more you practice, the more you will become aware of your system. Maybe there'll be places where you're going, I know I'm not doing that right, and that's good because you're recognizing it. So then that's an opportunity to come to class and to ask questions and say, can you clarify that? Can you explain this? And hopefully I will be able to, and if not, I will take it to my teacher and even to the master if, uh, if we can't figure it out. Good, so let's go down to the legs. And the knees. And the lower legs. And the ankles and feet. Good, and up the body again. I've stymied the master a few times with my questions. He's like, I don't understand what you're asking. I said, like, can you show me that? I'm like, I, um, but quite often, even just watching him, it answers the questions. And the reason probably the master doesn't understand the questions is because they don't make sense to him, because it's obvious. Um, when you're doing it right, it's obvious. Um, so sometimes we can get stuck in little loops of thought that actually don't make sense um but that's again that's part of the beauty of the practice it's getting a bit knotted in places and then un unraveling those knots and uh, having more experience and more awareness because of it so actually mistakes are good they are part of the process good so let's do a little heel tap do you remember earlier we lifted the hands let's do it again let the hands go all floppy and breathe 
pumping that lymph, giving that energy, nice and bubbly, deep breath, and let go. Good, so let's just take a moment, please, to return to Wuji, an open stance is fine. Just give yourself a moment to listen to your body. Feel all that lovely energy bubbling away. Good, let's guide it back to cover center, hug your elbows in. Feeling into the touch of your hands, feeling into your belly. and feel your energy is stronger. Beautiful, thank you so much for joining me today. And um, I hope you're enjoying your classes, that's so important. If you're gonna do something, enjoy it, because that blossoms your energy. It's so much better for you than taking it like medicine. <laughs> so let's salute, please, right hand and fist, left hand straight together and we press forwards. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you next time.